Joining us in the studio tonight are one FCPR director, Lauren Mack, and mixed martial artist, Brandon, the truth, Vera. Welcome to Sports Desk, and welcome back to Sports Desk, Lauren. Good for to be sure. here. Thanks uh, for having us. Oh, for sure, man, for sure. Uh, Lauren, let's start with you. When you found out that the truth was available for the 1FC, how important was it for you to, hey, you know, we gotta, we gotta reach out, we gotta try and get him over here somehow, some way. Yeah, 1FC jumped at the opportunity. I mean, as you know, he's one of the, the toughest fighters walking the face of this earth right now. He's a fantastic fighter inside the cage, outside of the cage. He's a proud Filipino. 1FC is the largest MMA organization in Asia. It's a global brand. Yeah. We want the best fighters in the world. Brandon Vera is one of the best fighters in the world. We heard he was a free agent. We jumped at the opportunity. Brandon? Yes, sir. Uh, you said <laughs> they, they jumped at the opportunity. When, when they called you and they said, what, you know, I have a chance to fight in the Philippines. How big is that for you? You know, it was a, it was a big, big deal. And when he's talking about they jumped at the opportunity, I got the call within the hour that <laughs> it was released to the media, you know? Wow. And, uh, I was still in negotiations with a bunch of different people. Yeah. Um, One FC definitely was high on the table, and they said, "Oh yeah, um, for sure, your first fight will be in Manila." Uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. What'd you say? I'm gonna call you right back. Hold on. Let me call these other people and tell them. Hold on. I, got, I have to talk to One FC right away. Yeah. So it's it's a big deal, man. You know. Um, half of my family is still here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. They've never been able to watch me fight live, and now they come December 5th in MOA Arena to get to come watch me for the very first time and actually be part and take part in my life yeah. in that aspect, you know, and that's a huge deal, man. And I've been wanting to fight here in the Philippines since the very first day I ever fought MMA. Yeah. So it's, it's like a dream come true, you know? Everything's coming to fruition now. And do you think that at this point in your career, like, why did it just happen now? Or do you, are you like, you know what, I don't care. This is it. I mean, you're embracing the, the, the moment. I, I don't worry about why things happen or what things happen. Ever since day one, I just roll with the punches. Whatever happens, whatever comes, I just take it and go in stride. And uh, I look at this as a blessing, man. I mean, yeah. I can't look at it as anything else. I'm fighting in the Philippines, in Manila. What? I've been wanting to do that since day one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you've been here so many times uh, promoting, uh, you know, uh, different outfits and, and so on and so forth. But now you're actually fighting here. Yeah. It's got to be a little different. It's, it's scary. It yeah. is scary. You know, I don't get too nervous about many things, but fighting home for all intents and purposes yeah. is, is, a, is a huge deal. You know, it's a... It's like a dream finally coming true and it, you don't know if it's real or not yet. It hasn't slapped me in the face yet. Okay. So, but I'm, I'm looking forward to and preparing myself for the energy that I'm going to feel that evening come December 5th. It's going to be crazy. Have you told him about the, how, how crazy the crowds here get when, and what they expect when he walks out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he has a good idea. He hasn't seen a 1FC yet in Manila. I mean, it's, yeah. there's nothing like it. The excitement, the fireworks, the people, the fights, the, the crowd is just incredible so uh, i know they're going to be there to support brandon on december 5th and it's going to be an incredible night for sure uh, what, what do you know about your opponent you know i know my opponent igor sabora mm -hmm. he's a local boy for all intents and purposes you know he's married to a filipina or a chinese girl um he lives here he has knocked out two opponents with hands heavy hands mm -hmm. um he's slower than i am so I know my speed is going to come in. I watch his videos. There's only two videos on him, and I watch him three times a week just to keep him in my head, just to stay hungry and keep focused on what I'm supposed to be doing. So I've been studying him. His fights have been short, but I do find a lot of openings yeah. in his videos. Already going over the film with my coaches, so we're already, be, we're already getting ready for him. We've been getting ready for him for the past three weeks, plus I have six more weeks when I get home. Speaking of which, you're going to be training here, or where are you going to be training uh, before for the fight? Well, I'm going back home, yeah. um, headed back to Alliance Training Center in San Diego, yeah. my gym. I'll be training with the guys out there. All of the guys at the gym are professional fighters. You know, everybody kind of has their own thing that they have to do, but yeah. a lot of guys have already committed to coming back here to the Philippines. Okay. Um, we've put our feelers out. We have a couple different places that we might possibly be training. I'll probably be here for the last three, maybe two weeks of camp. It could be anywhere from here in the city to in Quezon province to Baguio. So it just depends on how it works out and how many guys are coming. 
Okay. So a couple more details to work out. And you're going to be fighting in the heavyweight uh, division. Yes. Uh, you're back at heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is, do, you, do, you, do you are you more comfortable at heavyweight, or do, do you you know how is the lightweight uh, light heavyweight uh, f for you? You know, uh, I'm super comfortable at heavyweight. That's yeah. why I started my career. I had to drop down to 205. It was where the contract was. It's where everybody wanted me to move to at the time. Can I do it? Yeah, of course I can. I can do anything I want to do. You know, mm -hmm. I put my mind to it. I'm going to make it happen. But being heavyweight, being able to eat, being able to go home and just pick whatever I want out the fridge as long as it's healthy for me is a comforting feeling, man. Like, for me, I always grew up, my dad said, it doesn't matter what kind of car you have, what kind of house you have, whatever, as long as you can eat good. Man, when I was, at two, when I was cutting 205, I was eating, but I was not eating good. You yeah. know, like, I can only eat one third of what I normally eat. I have to count calories. I have to see what the package says on the back. You know what? That's not fun, man. That's not life, brother. You're not supposed to be doing that every day, day in, day out. I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but talk about your evolution as, as a fighter. Uh, you know, dating back to your, your uh, even, let's, let's go as far back as the Frank Mir fight. Okay. Uh, from, from that fight, from that Frank Mir fight, which put you on the map uh, to what you are today. Talk about the evolution. You know, the evolution has been public. You got to see it yeah. firsthand. You, you got to enjoy my peaks. You got to see me in my valleys, you know. And all of that has happened throughout life. I just think it's life, you know. Uh, my head got big. My head got popped. Uh, personal things happen in my life. Contractual things happen in life. Man, it's, MMA is, is one of the rough, it's probably the roughest sport in the world. Now you add that and compound everything else that happens in a normal person's life on top, bro, it's, it's definitely something to be reckoned with, you know? And you know the old saying, life is a beep. <laughs> and you have to get pushed with it. You have to push hard back. So I just never stop pushing forward. And like I said before, I just roll with the punches. The evolution of Brandon Vera, though, starting off as a young cocky fighter, I'm still a cocky fighter. I'm more seasoned and I'm definitely smarter about training and how I fight my opponents. What are some of your favorite MMA nicknames? Well, I have to, without a doubt, say it's the truth. Okay. Because in reality, it's the truth. If you know Brandon Vera, what he does in the cage is the truth. What he does outside the cage is the truth. So, no Absolutely. Doubt. And that many people can handle the truth. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of the truth, Brandon, what, what's, what, what are some of your, aside from the truth, uh, what, what, else, what else do you think? You know, I kind of like the thing. It's kind of cool. Aside from my own, you know, I love the original axe murderer. Okay. Mr. Vandalay Silva. You know, like, when that nickname first came out, you know, there's a lot of biters and people started taking, oh, I'm the axe murderer. I'm, no, yeah. man. There was <laughs> only one original axe murderer. And when they nicknamed him that, I remember thinking, yeah, you know, if that guy didn't fight MMA, he probably will be an axe murderer. <laughs> yeah. I remember thinking that, man. <laughs> but how did you come, how did the truth? come about? Uh, how did that, you know, how did that nickname uh, come to fruition? You know, it was kind of backwards. I, I just, I maybe say three years ago found out that Veritas in Spanish means the truth. I didn't know that. It really just came from a friend in San Diego who asked me a question during a tournament. He wasn't, he didn't do well at the tournament at all. And he came up to me and asked me what he could have did better. Okay. And the first thing out of my mouth was like, man, you should have just been showing up to the gym to train. You shouldn't have been at this tournament today anyways because you weren't ready. He got so mad at me, he got up and left and told everybody, you know, on the other side of the gym, Brandon's such a, such a jerk, man. He's such an a-hole. Like, he, man, he, he's so mean. He, 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 he this, 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 this. And then they were like, well, what happened? What happened? He said, well, I asked him this, and he told me this. He's like, what did you think Brandon was going to say? Like, <laughs> he tells everybody exactly how it is. And that was the day that everybody came up with the nickname The Truth. Okay, <laughs> the truth, and, and, it's, and it's you know it's definitely fitting in, in many many different in many in many ways. Uh, let's talk about um, the fifth of the December. Uh, who else? Are, what are the other cards? Uh, what are what else are the other fights in there in the, in the card? Yeah, right now we have only one fight announced, which is Brandon versus Igor Sabora, which is going to be at heavyweight. Should be a fantastic fight. Both very tough individuals. Um, that's all we've announced for the card right now. Don't be surprised if uh, we see a few title fights on this card, if we see our favorite Filipino and Filipina fighters back on December 5th. So as of now, December 5th, uh, in Manila is our last fight for the year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go out with a bang, a lot of big surprises. Guaranteed, it's going to be the best fight card in MMA history. Wow. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, when you hear this, Brandon, uh, <laughs> and, and just hearing it sounds impressive also. 
But hearing it and knowing that you're fighting in Manila, uh, I know I can't stress how, how how big this is because <laughs> you know as 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 fans. We've always wanted to see Brandon Vera fight, but we just had all, you know, we, it was, you gotta go to the States, you know, Europe, I mean, it, it, was, it wasn't easy. For sure. So, but now, now you're here. Uh, and as a, as a fan, I, I can't wait for it. I, I can't wait for it. And, you know, I, it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's finally happening. And it doesn't matter uh, what stage of your career, because it's finally happening. And I think that's the most important part about it. Mm-hmm. But... I'm excited about it, man. Like, there's there's no other way to describe it. I'm ecstatic. I'm nervous. I'm I'm at there, a loss there, for words. Is there pressure at all? It, for sure, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I mean, come on, you know, I'm home fighting in front of family, in front of my fans that have been waiting for me to do this yeah. since day one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of pressure, you know, and I know there's going to be a lot of a lot of fans wanting to hang out and and do this and. When I'm coming out to the, to the cage, I know people are going to want to be touching and hanging out. And you know how people run out and slap the crowd. But I don't do that. I've never done that since day one. So I want to apologize up front to my fans. I'm not there to play and hang out with the fans until my job is finished inside of the cage. Once that's done, we can party for four days straight if you want. <laughs> but until then, it's going to be all business. All right. All right. So speaking of which, December 5, uh, Lauren, why don't you invite everybody out there who come down to the Mall of Asia Arena and, of course, support this man right here. You, you've heard it here tonight. Finally, Brandon Vera, December 5th, MOA. It's going to be the greatest fight night in MMA history. Brandon Vera, the truth, has finally arrived back home. <laughs> He's going to put on a great show. Title fights, great local fighters, great international fighters. Don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. Brandon? Salahat mga fans ko dito sa bansa, sa buong mundo. Make it back here on December 5th. Come watch me hurt somebody that evening. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have you here on the show. Of course, it's a pleasure to always have you back. Uh, anytime you want, just come back. Huh? Always. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.